went into the uh, the minus signs last night instantly. Woke up there, everything's frozen, covered in frost. Oh. Getting those chickens done is a major task. 90 birds done. A few friends come and help, and they also had chickens to take home from that too. So that's done. Uh, I gotta pick up my elk, sausage, and steaks are ready today too. Thank God, get that done. And then, um, got some sad news. One of my First Nations superhero ladies ended up in the hospital and almost passed away. <clears throat> so, we're going to go uh, grab some of her family members and head to the hospital today and go visit. Bring her whatever she needs and hang out. It's so maybe an extra prayer or two for her. Her name's April. And that would be appreciated. And uh, what else? Sarah ran into a fluke, ran into somebody yesterday who I've met up north of Falls' channel. And, uh, and then she's having some shitty luck down here with her daughter, who unfortunately has to take her child and hide from a abusive piece of shit <laughs> dude. It's just, it's amazing how many, how many instances of that have come across lately. And I don't look for it, just whatever, you know, the news comes your way. The amount of, I can't call them men because they're not men, but the amount of males that abuse women, it's just blows me away. It's, it's just ridiculous. I can't even imagine striking a female. I mean, women are built, they are not built the same as men. We're built to protect the women and the children. That's what we're built for, not to harm them. You know what I mean? It makes me want to vomit. Sometimes I, sometimes I think, yeah, sometimes I think it might be worthy time just to go get a group full of people and hunt down those people and make them disappear. Stop that torch from being passed on to the children. Anyway, I think I'm going to go seek them out today and see if they need help today, too. So today's going to be pretty chalked up. Helping people who need it. Getting my chores done here and getting the hell out of here and going up north again. And seeing my good friends up north and running around the forest like an animal. And then uh, grab my new puppy guard dog for the farm and come home. So, in the meantime, there's nothing but emails coming in nonstop, nothing but uh, knowledge coming in nonstop. And I actually was starting to think today, I actually sat back and I was trying to wonder how all of this knowledge being fed to me, to all you through me, how it's affecting me, or if it's having any kind of effect on me. <clears throat> and that's a, that a curious question I'd like to ask everybody out there is, whoever's following this channel a lot, is um, I'm curious to know what the testimonies of all these innocent, honest people what it is, how, 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 how that's affecting you. And maybe uh, take a minute out and see, take a look at your own self, your thought patterns, your emotional reactions, whatever you got, and, and, and uh, have a look at how this is affecting you. Because how I realize it's affecting, it's affecting me is, you know, in the very beginning, I was just more frustrated at how many people were scared to share their, their honest story, what happened to them without the mask before, and that really made me angry. And it frustrated me that my grandfather had to die scared of the same people he was willing to die for. That frustrated the shit out of me. And uh, I thought, you know, respect for him. And, and as well, I threw in Dr. John Benedict as well, who I met up with before, a super kind human being, and out of respect for them, is why I came out and said, yeah, man, seen it. Didn't ask for it. Ram it up your ass if you think that's funny or if you can't accept it, because I don't give a shit. And that's how I came out at the beginning, right? Ready to go. And then, as a quick recap, then a lot of the so-called big names in the Sasquatch Bigfoot community um, emailed me and wanted me on their team so bad, I never replied to any of them. And next thing you know, they went out of their way to nonstop attack me. <laughs> and thanks to them, they blew this channel up to what it is now. Did a big job in assisting that anyway. Anyway, how this is affecting me is it is making me... Nothing surprises me anymore, first off, when I receive emails from all of you. Nothing, it's pretty tough to, to make me, to shock me now. But I find that me personally, I find that I feel that I am possibly getting a little more frustrated in a way. Not frustrated of, the frustration from me is due to the immense lying, misleading, betrayal, 
to us as, an, as a species, as a population, as, a, as communities, whatever you want to call it, all of us, is very frustrating to me. Like I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm reading these emails and I've, I've said, I already stated, I will read all of them. And once I say I'm going to do something, I do it. I don't quit. I'll be reading these when I'm 90 if I have to. I don't give a shit. Everyone's going to be heard. That's what I'm doing. But uh, I find that I'm like I'm getting to the somewhat of a point of all right, enough of the bullshit, enough of the bullshit, you lying frickin' pricks. You know, it's like I say, I don't want to die and possibly find the truth out after death, maybe, and then have that moment of going, oh, oh, you pricks, you got me. You got me my whole lifetime, you got me. And I find that I'm having that moment now. I'm having it now. That's how I'm reacting to all this. Right now, I'm going, oh. Oh, you dirty bastards. You freaking dirty bastards. That's the effect that I'm having from all these testimonies. And um, like I said from day one, I don't have one half of an inkling of needing to think or even thinking. Proof needs to be delivered to anybody. If you've been listening to the people and you can't accept it, I feel absolutely sorry for you. You have been, your brain has been made into mulch by the evil pricks that want it to be mulch. Sorry, somebody's got to tell you, I'll be the messenger. Um, there's so much proof, it's ridiculous. There's so much proof for uh, many things it's ridiculous, but what's frustrating is, um, is that the pricks have made it this far. That frustrates me. And now, I find lately that I am more looking for ways to turn it around. Not just this topic, but many, many topics. I'm trying to now, I'm trying to figure out how to turn this shit around. How to get truths out there. How to get humans more aware. How to free up humans. And, uh, and how to make life better. That's what I'm trying to do. I don't know why. I haven't a clue why. You think at this stage of the game I could just be a selfish prick like the majority of people out there. And who gives a shit? I got food in the fridge, whatever. And carry on and do my thing, but I don't know why. I, I don't I don't have that. I've got a I have a burning drive to right the wrong, expose the pricks, and get the truth shared. I don't know where it comes from. I haven't a clue. There's nothing I can do about it. I can't stop it. So that's what I'm doing. But that's the effect it's having on me now. It's making me that oh shit moment that I've been dreading. Possibly after the death of this physical lifetime. I'm having that right now. I'm having it. I'm having it now. And uh, I, I need to, uh, I really need to make a difference and turn the shit around if I can, if I can help and um, make it better. It's frustrating, isn't it? It's amazing, isn't it? The level of misleading, what has happened to us, the majority of us, on, uh, on a lot of topics. It's really something else. What a huge effort some dark, filthy bastards have had. And when it comes to this topic, what an amazing effort that the majority of the so-called big names have thrown forward to keep all of you going in a circle. And if you haven't seen that clearly yet, come on, think about it. Think about that circle, that journey of no return. The majority of the so-called big names have kept all of the majority of you on because they held the narrative and held that camera and hoard their faces out to every camera they could in reality TV show, whatever you have, right? They played a huge role in making sure that this topic was kept a joke. They played a huge role in making sure a lot of truth when it comes to this topic is kept hidden, not repeated. And they played a huge role in keeping this going in the circle, an endless circle of no return and no change. Right? So, many of you who think I'd be a prick in the way I refer to those pricks, <laughs> Oh well, sucks to be emotionally weak, doesn't it? All those pricks can ram it up their asses. There's my morning rant. Let's get a little sip of coffee in here and maybe I can piss off just a few more people before I go. Anyway, let's get some important voices heard. The most important voices in the world today, which is the people. Let's get them heard, all right? All right, what do we got? Having a clue. I know one thing. 
It's titled Red now. <laughs> this is titled Joining the Club and DNA Puzzle Pieces. <clears throat> Excuse me, okay. Hey Steve, I have to say thank you for everything you're doing and the time you're putting in to help spread the truth. It means more than you may know to me and I'm sure many others. It is super easy and you're doing the same thing I'm doing by emailing everybody through me, my man. So on to my just unreal experience. I had some things happen before I shared with you. Noises in the woods and the trail camera image from your video, what the H. But I never actually saw anything in person. Of course, I couldn't help myself. And there's a wildlife management area not far from me. I'd rather not say where. Don't want any trouble there. I'll say it's in Florida. <clears throat> I take my dogs out there to go for walks. It's a large area with dirt roads throughout. It closes at sunset, and I decided one day to wait till dark in the back of the WMA and drive out slowly with a flashlight looking through the woods for eye shine. Really was looking more so for deer hogs. Anyway, as I get close to the exit about one or two anyway, as I get close to the exit about one to two miles in, I'm going about 15 miles per hour looking straight to my left out my truck window with a flashlight pointed towards the woods. There's a 20-foot grassy area between the dirt road and the wood line. As I'm driving, my flashlight ends up on a human-looking figure squatted down facing the same direction I'm traveling, parallel to the road. Squatted, ass to grass, almost hugging a tree right at the wood line at the edge of the grass. It looked like he was hiding, waiting for me to pass, and he's positioned to perfectly watch my truck go down the road from behind in his position. I feel like he expected me to just pass by, and unfortunately, I happened to have a flashlight smack him dead in the face. His facial expression looked a mix of frightened and surprised, with eyes wide and teeth showing. Wow. <clears throat> the mouth was very, very wide for the head, and eyes reflected bright yellow eye shine. I could clearly see the eyes and teeth, and also the mid his midsection, chest and arm and knee of his right side, and the side of the tree that I was passing him on. His face was facing me directly head on, face to face, and he was exactly 20 feet away. I went back and measured, and 20 feet, six meters, is very close. Yes, it is. That's like a vehicle. As the light hit him, I noticed he started to pop up immediately, but I never slowed down or attempted to stop, and kept going with my flashlight passing him, and it's almost like I didn't realize what happened till I was past him. I did get a huge adrenaline rush as soon as I saw him, and he made the popping motion upwards surprisingly faster than my brain realized what had happened. I almost fell, felt lightheaded as I kept driving, thinking, holy shit, what the F was that? It really seemed like a naked man at first, but I highly doubt a naked man would be in the middle of the woods in a closed WMA at night. Honestly, it wasn't that hairy looking. I could clearly see his skin, even though there was thin black hair on the body and limbs. The skin seemed the skin seemed like a bronze tan color. His face reflected a lot of the light, and his nose area was completely whitewashed from the light, since it was a pretty powerful flashlight. I wonder if his nose was maybe possibly greasy, which would add it to a reflection, maybe. There's a chicken in here. <clears throat> anyway, I just couldn't believe that in one night I went looking and bam, there it is. I also happened to be listening to a YouTube video at the same time talking about Sasquatch. I'll say I'm not sure if it was a Sasquatch. It wasn't huge looking. About average man size. But it being anything else scares the shit out of me and I'd much rather be a Sasquatch. I get it. <laughs> I agree. I know it seems unbelievable, but I have nothing to say about its say, I have nothing to say, but it's the truth. Also, I really rather not see, also, I really rather not see anything again, because if I was on foot, I would have definitely been scared shitless. Also, the real reason I sent this email is about the DNA. I've heard about this thing called the Okashic Records. Oh, Akashic, Akashic, or Akashic Records, AKA SHIC Records, Basically, like a history accessible to all being through some mental ability. You can check it out if you're interested. There's a quick, good description on Wiki. And it was said that in this record, it stated, excuse me, 
The Sasquatch was created during the Atlantis civilization for beings used to work by using genes from a female woman gorilla and giant approximately 15,000 years ago. In your last video, you mentioned the 15,000 year thing, and I just had to say something. I'm sure you've heard this, but I think everyone should hear it, and maybe it fits in their puzzle. Again, thank you. And if you ever need anything, let me know. And don't worry, the good guys always win in the end. I hope so. I hope so. Thanks for that email, man. It kind of reminds me of a story or an experience that was relayed here in Vancouver Brown. Some native guys were out pit lamping, which is having a big spotlight, and they go at nighttime and spotlight up deer and elk to shoot. And apparently they had a young Sasquatch who was basically slammed himself into the ditch on the side of the road against the grass and weeds and they saw it and they stopped right beside it when they were shining the light on and the thing was squealing his face off, screaming, scared shitless, not moving. And uh, that's what memory came to my mind when you relayed what you saw. You imagine that? Well, I guess you can, right? Because you just seen that in the flashlight, but you didn't stop. What a crazy thing to have blasting in your face. Appreciate your email, man. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. You got any truth, anything to help the people? Get it into me. Get it into us through me, whatever you want to do. <clears throat> 1975 Skunk Ape Florida Sabe. You can use my name. All right. Hello, Steve, and everyone else out here at our roundtable knowledge. My name is Dustin McRoberts, and I'm now 51 years old. Thank you for all you do and for giving us a place to share our experiences. You're very welcome, and you are a free man. I hope this helps someone with their puzzle pieces. I'm sorry for the loss of Mr. Macaroni. But those little billy goats seem to keep you smiling a lot. As a native Floridian and avid hunter growing up, I've seen and heard lots of things in the woods around our great state. Things that were easy to understand, and some things that were just not explainable. Anyway, this is mine and my mother's story. I had her proofread this before sending in to make sure I remember this correctly. This is the fall of 76 and I was five years old. My mom and I lived in Kathleen, Florida on the edge of the Green Swamp out of Deason Road. Back then it was a dirt road and there were only a couple of houses on the road and a relatively new trailer park at the end of the road. We had to drive a little less than a half a mile back down our trail of a driveway to get to our home. It was an old wood frame home that was 100 years old in 76. We had an artesian well pump in the kitchen, and for the first few months we lived there, we had to heat the water on the gas stove to have a hot bath water. This was an old cracker house on blocks and had a front porch that I used to play under all the time. The roof of the porch was on a pitch, and the edge over the wooden stairs it measured seven foot six from the ground to the roof line. So, it was nearly dusk when my mom and I were coming down the drive in her VW Bug, headlights on, high to spot any deer that might be on the property. As we rounded the curve in the driveway and the lights shined on the house, that's when we both saw it. And it was big, broad, and looking directly at our car. Now I'm not gonna tell you it had big red eyes. The eye shine that I saw for only a split second was golden. As it saw us and we saw it, it turned and walked down the side of the house between the cow pasture fence and the house. My mom hit the gas and went around the great oak tree that was at the corner of the porch. She got around the side of the house and we saw nothing. She grabbed a 38 revolver and jumped out of the car telling me to lock the doors. Little good that would have done looking back, lol. So with the car off, headlights shining and my mom at our fence line, all was quiet. <laughs> she sounds like she was a kick-ass mom. Too quiet. Our hunting dogs that were in their kennels were whimpering. They normally barked at anything and us when we came home, not this night. They were scared. There's more of the story. The next day we, when we looked for prints, the next day when we looked for prints, I've got to go for now, but I'll come back and finish my sighting. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> okay, I'm back. So where was I? Oh, the porch and the oak tree. This is relevant because these are what we use to size up our guest. We intentionally rounded the curve in the driveway and saw the creature. It was standing next to our porch, and its head was just under the edge of the roof, seven foot six, at the edge of the overhang. So, now being older and having a firm grasp on measurement, 
I'm guessing this thing was seven foot to maybe seven foot three tall. It was nearly as thick or wide, if you will, as the great oak tree it was standing next to, which was nearly 90 years old based on what our landlord told us. So at the shoulders, I'm guessing three foot six, six maybe three foot 10 inches wide. It was big. So I told you it was too quiet. We had cows and hunting dogs and even had a calf that was about 400 pounds or so that I would hand feed and, and had bottle fed because his mother died shortly after birthing. Anyway, my mom was calling the calf to get it to come to the fence and it wouldn't come. She called it again, nothing, silence. All of a sudden, we heard the most god awful scream from what we thought was that calf and then nothing again. So this whole time I'm in the car, doors locked and the windows cracked so I could hear. And my mom ran back to the car. I opened her door and she backed us out of there quick. We went to her girlfriend's house who lived about a half hour away and mom was rattled. She talked the whole way. Did you see it? Yes, mama, I saw it. It was big and hairy. Did you hear the calf? Yes, mama, I did. I think it's dead. Mama, do you smell it? She slammed on the brakes and nearly put me in the dash. You can smell it too? Yes, mom. It stunk bad, worse than the dogs. We got to my mom's friend's house and she got on the phone to Mr. Goldsby. He was her landlord. She nervously told him what happened. She nearly dropped the phone. He said, it, he said that it was a skunk ape. It's been around for years. Damn thing stinks too. The next day we went home and met with Mr. Goldsby. He came to the house to see if we could find anything. We found tracks, footprints right by the porch where it had stood when we saw it. We measured them and they were just over 15 inches long. There were several tracks led to the fence. These tracks had nearly a 60 inch stride in between. The ground was covered in oak tree leaves so the prints weren't great but you could see the indenting from each foot in the ground. Right before I jumped the fence, there was a very deep indentation in the ground, maybe three inches deep. And the track on the other side of the fence was almost nine feet away and measured nearly four inches deep. Mom and Mr. Goldsby went into the cow pasture. She wouldn't let me come. The pasture had lots of dog fennel growing up all around and some palmetto patches. They, they found the calf. It was dead. And its neck and head had been pulled up and backwards to where its spine was pulled up past its shoulders and broken. Mom said there was little to no blood. My mom asked Mr. Goldsby why he didn't tell us about this before. He simply said he was so used to it coming around and not, and not bothering anything that he didn't think he needed to. We moved two weeks later. This is my sighting story and my mom's. We both believe. I've not seen another since, and if I do, it'll be a gift. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, it's, I don't know what to describe those sightings, if it's a gift or a sentence, right, for some. I don't know why they randomly kill shit. I have a clue. If anything, I think maybe it's possibly because they weren't here very long, and maybe that's the first time they saw something like a calf, and maybe it's, maybe they considered a threat. Who knows? I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me, especially a calf. that He could have picked it up and carried it away like they do elk, right? What a shitty thing for a mom to see with her five-year-old car in the car by herself and not have a clue about them ever before, right? <clears throat> Those filthy bastards, lying pricks. Lying pricks out there. <clears throat> All right, what do we got? Um, all right, this is something. Here we go. What do we got? Looks like there's two, two emails in here, maybe. Mark is red. <clears throat> Important emergency portals. All right. Loud and proud. Steve, I was listening on 19th of December, and someone mentioned Admiral Byrd, the big piece of the puzzle that some of problems connecting our stories read Admiral Byrd's hollow theory. You'll be surprised when the Admiral's sketch artist describing seeing giants as tall as 17 feet and take a guess where these giants were seen. There was two expeditions Admiral Byrd took to discover what I'm giving you. He flew over 200 miles into the interior of our earth. 
from the North Pole and the South Pole when they began to realize that they were within a whole new world. Yes, that is what I'm saying. Read up on Admiral Byrd's hollow theory. You won't be disappointed, but now you'll want answers. That sounds, you know, I've, I've heard the, of the Admiral Byrd thing more than a handful of times. I just haven't had time to look into it myself. So, I can't say much on that topic right now. Sounds like something else. Who knows, right? Hi, Steve. My name is James Sean Harmon. Loud and proud. I'm 54 years old and live in Vancouver, Washington. I've had the opportunity to have had three encounters with our awesome but elusive hairy men. Not to mention the wood knocking when I was logging at for Warehouser from 91 after the United States Navy until 94. Just to give you a rundown on my fear level, which I only fear God himself. I have to start my story from my last encounter to the beginning. Please pay attention. Thank you. I need to let everyone understand that not having a fear level is due to my 09 diagnosis from the VA of being bipolar, number one. Without meds, I can be the biggest effing asshole anyone's met, and the hairy man knew that. I have a feeling the hairy men call me the mad man of Mount St. Helens. I've thrown some serious tantrums in the woods, not knowing of my mental condition until years later. That's unfortunate. So, now that we have my medical history out of the way, and noted I can invite you into my mind and a journey that most look at me as if I am mentally ill. I never said that I was not. LOL. Steve, it was August 2005 in Tootle, Washington, on a full moon night at the entrance through a Forest Service gate to the Sediment Dam. My girl and I, my girl and I, a couple days prior, went through there to get to a small community called Silver Lake. As we're walking through, she said, Jim, you don't want to come through here without a weapon. I said, why? She just looked at me, so I acknowledged her, knowing she has lived her entire life, there her entire life. It was around 11.30 p.m. and about 75 degrees and a full moon. I left my girl's house on a bike, headed to Silver Lake, which is about three miles. But if I take a shortcut through the sediment dam, I can cut a third off. So I turned up just past the substation, which is a power station. I got off my bike and walked the remaining distance to the gate, which, which the spur road was compacted with fur needles. So you could not hear me. Once I reached the gate, I also had an 80 pound rucksack as well. I picked the bike up and lifted it over. And as I went to sit it down, I heard a thump, thump. I have to stop here. One week earlier, on a pitch black night, about three miles as the crow flies, I heard the exact same sound, but this time it was higher in the tree because I felt the impact when what I thought was a cougar, but something sounded different. But I was not sure. My girl was sleeping in the truck. Sorry, I will tell you what I was doing. Sorry? Sorry, <clears throat> I will tell you what I was doing. Remember, I am homeless and have no job and living up in the high country by day and the low at night. I was getting fuel from an excavator for my truck. And that is how me and, the, and Miss Jenny were able to fund our, fund our fuel. I'm sorry for taking the fuel. As I walked down the freshly laid spur driveway on a slight grade, whatever it was, hit the ground and covered 50 yards in about three to four full strides, then laid down. My figure of speech for epping fast. I took it as a large cat and continued, but now I'm on the offensive by getting very loud and boisterous to sound big and aggressive and in control of my voice. I still got the fuel, but at all times looking at the position where it laid down and kept talking and letting it know if you want epping trouble, you found it. Five gallons of fuel and a somewhat steep grade walking up the spur road to get my tr to my truck was the longest walk of my life. That time, as I drove away, the hair on my bald head stood straight up and the wicked, sinister sensation running down my spine. It was like sliding into home plate and hearing safe. I was relieved and hugged and missed my miss. Sorry. I was relieved and hugged my miss when she woke up. I said nothing to her about what I heard. Back to the substation. 
When I heard the thump thump, I looked up and there was this at least eight foot tall figure with his back to me about 25 yards with high bushes up to his shoulder blades. As I was fixated at what I was witnessing, I felt paralyzed in a relaxed state of mind, but was excited like a kid in a candy store at what I was seeing. Not more than an eye blink, not more than an eye blink, another one stepped out from behind a pump house up on the spur road. And this is where I went into a state of, oh, F me, quietly. Steve, you read an email one time from this man who described what he saw. I looked over at my now lady and said that is exactly what I saw. At hearing that, it justified and gave me true sanity knowing I was not seeing things. Thank you, Steve, for this outlet you've given for the people. As I stayed focused on the new arrival, he was about six and a half feet tall. He whipped his head and these, what I think were dreadlocks, whipped in the moonlight. It was like they were on a stage. They were lit up like the 4th of July, not even knowing I was there. When the little one turned his head to communicate to his partner, I was in shock, excuse me, and excited at the same time. Time. It is burned into my hard drive and won't go away. He had a high hairline with dreads, I think, and the blackest alienated eyes with dark tan skin, but did not look human at all. I guarantee we don't share DNA with those boys. They were some, they were some rough looking badass MFers. Steve the little one made a head nod to his partner and a hand gesture straight ahead of them. They shook their heads and walked away from me. And then the uneffing, unbelievable thing happened right in front of me. They walked away and they disappeared through what looked like water. And then my body relaxed and I was able to pick my bike back up and did about an about face. And that is when the hair on my bald head came alive. Steve, I was about 30 yards from what I don't know. I believe it was a portal. I think they're the same ones a week prior. One more shocker for you and the people. Steve, when I was about four or five years old, I had a dreadful dream that left a lasting impression in my head. And he was the same face I saw in my dream. Steve, I have more, but I'm going to let this soak in. And I'll email you again where I can take you into the Toodle Valley where I used to log at about sunset. We will make contact within five to 10 minutes showing up. These ones are different. Thank you for what you have done for us, the people. God bless you and Sarah. Thank you, my friend, loud and proud. Okay, man, that's one hell of a freaking story. And uh, by the sounds of it, you've come a long way since having, having to, unfortunately, uh, steal fuel to survive. But I guess when shit gets shitty, people gotta do what they gotta do, right? No judging here, man. No judging here. Right back. Maybe you already have. I don't know. But if you haven't, make sure you write back. And uh, obviously, it took a while to get you to your original email. That's just the way it is here. Right now, until we find a... I don't know how you how do you find another way to get them up faster. Nobody can read two at a time. Different beings. Quite often, people report some of these beings as being absolutely no way it was human. But then the, the majority of people say it was a man. Right? A large, hairy man. <clears throat> but anyway, um, there is a, there's people like Dave Plata, Scott Carpenter, other people out there. They have gone deep into looking into this topic and they have a lot of answers, more answers than I have. I am, I'm not a researcher. I don't look into these beings specifically. I don't go after them. I don't try to meet with them. I don't try to communicate with them. I am about making sure that every single one of you gets your voice heard and uh, gets your confidence back and hopefully I can help as many people as I can get back out in the real world and enjoy what they can uh, while you're here and what you're most passionate about and not have that, not experience that theft, that theft of having the quality of life taken from you. It's not fair. It's a piss off to me and it's not right. And, um, as soon as I come up with a recipe to hand, hand the bad asses their ass, hand their asses to them, believe me, I'm, I'm going to. And, uh, 
but it's, it's definitely not something that one person can do, but it's definitely something a lot of people can do together, right? A lot of people need to come together and um, right the wrongs, expose the pricks, and make sure that the children are, are honestly informed of true knowledge of this lifetime, real true knowledge, not the absolute bullshit they're being fed today, right? Anyway, so there you go. I think I'm going to have to cut this one a little short today because I just got too much to do. And um, we, have some, we have some good people to help today here directly. I can do that. And that's what I'm going to do today. And so again, if you would, possibly if anybody can throw to the, an extra prayer today and mention April in their prayers, she's in the hospital by herself and um, it's not good. And hopefully it can get better. And uh, we're going to go see her. And uh, give her some good energy and some support. And, uh, and keep rocking along. So there. If you've got more you want to share, anybody, you can send it to sharemystoryhowtohunt.com. The backup channel. I think Sarah went and loaded a whole pile of the old original videos onto the channel to, to slow feed onto that channel just to keep it alive. And um, <clears throat> it's there. The Roundtable of Knowledge by HTH is the backup for when... The, uh, the dirty pricks decide to give me a spanking here again, which I'm sure won't be too far away. There we go, onward and upward. And I'll be back with a lot more voices being heard. In the meantime, um, I would like to, I'd like to hear maybe <clears throat> tonight, possibly I will go to the comment section of this video and I'll read them. And I, I would like to hear how all of this honest information from the people is how what effect it's having on you and what your disposition is, what your mindset is, what it makes you think or feel differently than previous. I, I'd like to know if there's many people out there who are having the same reaction I am, which is basically I've had it up to the nuts with the bullshit and it's time to turn it around and I'm pissed. That's my reaction at this point of the game. But I would like to know what everybody else's uh, feelings are after listening to this channel for X amount of time and all these good people, right? And then uh, possibly we can start, hopefully, moving forward toward honest knowledge and honest education across the board. Accepted knowledge and accepted education instead of forced bullshit, right? <laughs> there we go. A day of ranting. Holy shit. Okay, I gotta get going. I'll be back. <laughs>